I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome to Believe in Colts special live stream edition. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me as usual is my guy, Gerard Powers. And I'm telling you, uh, first off, Rodney McLeod's not going to make it with us today um, because, well, let's face it, he was he was up really late last night and worked his butt off. There's no way he's getting up this early and joining the show with us, especially with a short week upcoming uh, with Dallas on, on the horizon and you know, there's a lot of work to be done with the Indianapolis Colts. But first and foremost, Gerard, how was your how was your past week? It was good. It was good, man. Uh, you know, obviously holiday weekend. Uh this this past week with Thanksgiving and all that all that good food and good eating. Uh, but but no complaints. It was good. How about you? Yeah, I had a pretty good weekend right up until yesterday. Uh, <laughs> the The weekend ended horribly. Uh, for me, it was a weekend, you know, three-day weekend and all that. Uh, but I hope everybody out there that's watching this live stream also had a very good holiday weekend, um, Thanksgiving and all, whether you're U.S. or around the world. Um, hopefully, you just had a good weekend. Uh, let's get into the actual game yesterday. The Indianapolis Colts fall to the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it wasn't a good game from the get-go. They fall 24-17. It looks the, the score was a lot closer than what the game looked, in my opinion. I thought the Steelers, from the from the looks of it, had this game in the bag from the get-go. Yeah, I mean, when you watch it, I mean, Steelers probably played one of their better games this entire season to where all phases looked like they were in sync. You know, the offense was uh, running the ball well. I want to say they probably averaged almost five yards a carry. They just looked in rhythm offensively. And then when you look at the score, it was just like, hey, the coats are still hanging around. As soon as, you know, some starts to click or they find some rhythm, maybe the coats are more in position to take over this game. But obviously uh we, we didn't get in rhythm quick enough to uh to, to win the game oh no absolutely not and uh i'll be honest with you the betting line uh had the colts and if you pick the colts then you lost but i'll tell you what basketball is back at bet online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season you'll always find the latest odds team matchup info player news and game trends at bet online as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet Online where the game starts. So we were talking a little bit before this game and, or before we started here. And obviously the Indianapolis Colts offense really started off real, real bad. That first half was about as bad as Colts footballs. I've, now Ryan didn't get sacked a whole lot, but the, there was drops in completions. Uh, they couldn't get the run game going. It, it was just bad all around. Wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, but it's typical how this season been going, even though this might have been the worst we've started. I mean, we've literally seemed like we've started slow almost every game this season. And uh, I mean, every week you keep hoping that it's going to be a little different. But man, uh, maybe this is just who our offense is. And, you know, we just got to work around it and still find ways to win because, you know, I, after all these losses that we have, you know, the majority of them, most of them, you know, we still had a shot to win the game at the end of it. I thought the offensive line overall played decent. I, I, mm -hmm. I, there wasn't a, a whole lot of pressure. Now, Matt Ryan had to move around a little bit, but, you know, every quarterback in the NFL is going to have to move around a little bit in that situation. He only got sacked, I think, three times. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe. TJ Watt never even sniffed him, if I remember right, which was incredibly surprising to me. Um, but and we ran the ball uh, effectively. I think Jonathan Taylor, 20 carries or so, you know, 90, 90 yards. We over four yards a carry. So, yeah, offensive line definitely played yeah. well. Yeah. In, in, in this case, it was legitimately the passing game that really held us back, you know. And I'm, I'm looking at this game, and the majority, almost all of the passes seemed like they were 
absolutely contested. Now, is that a situation where you think the defense was just, you know, the secondary? Pittsburgh's secondary has been kind of eaten up this year uh, in, in, the, in the past game, but the Colts mm-hmm. – receivers couldn't get really much separation there is that on the Colts or is that on Pittsburgh do you think I think it's a little bit of both I mean I think we've had you know you know struggle or we've uh you know had some difficulty getting away from uh DBs this entire season even though we've had games to where we separated a little bit the majority of it you know it's been contested you know throws and catches this entire year but when you look at the Pittsburgh secondary even though they haven't been living up to the Pittsburgh standards and having kind of a down year this year man they got some dudes in that secondary still so that's what I meant by earlier just saying the Pittsburgh played this last game it seemed like one of their better games because their defense was out there flying around as well especially Minka Absolutely. Now, we will get into the chat here in just a moment, but uh, just want to touch on a few things as we move along. Uh, Obviously, um, there's a lot of talk right now uh, across social media over two specific things. One, obviously, Matt Ryan, uh, it doesn't look like he has a lot of uh, throwing power right now, but we'll get into that because that's what the chat is just absolutely blowing up about. We'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to talk about the end of the game, the time management. Now, a lot of people thought that Jeff Saturday should have called that timeout uh, after that after that scramble run. What do you do? You think Jeff was in the right in this situation where you know, hey, uh, save those three timeouts. We still have a little bit of time here. I know what play we're calling. Blah blah blah. Or should he save that? Well, I don't know, 25, 30 seconds with a timeout since he had three. I think he definitely should have called a timeout. Um, his his reasoning, I get it. You know, when you're in rhythm, you think you got the plays and you're ready to go. I just think he forgot about the fatigue element of that situation. Two minute football, man, guys are gasping for air. Everybody's going 100 miles an hour, and uh, everything's in a hurry up type situation. Your quarterback just scrambled, you know, doing things that he don't normally do. He's barely getting up himself. He even looked to the sideline like, man, we're not calling a timeout. So, you know, to see Matt not take control of that situation and just call one as well shows you that he was trying to do what the coaches were asking him to do and uh, things of that nature. But I think Jeff was wrong in the situation. I think he definitely should have used that time out uh, just to preserve some clock, you know, at the end of the day, because you want to have your best play in, in those moments. And if you got three timeouts with, you know, under a minute left, uh, you definitely want to use those. As a defensive player, uh, would calling a timeout benefit the Steelers' defense in that situation, or would it, would it make them maybe overthink a little bit? No, it's definitely going to benefit the defense. That's because you can get set. You know, you can talk about things that uh, you know probably going to come up. You go back to your film study. Hey, this is a situation when this play or that play is about to happen. You know, and these this is the defense we're going to run. Uh, and they be they get to uh, catch their breath as well. But sometimes when you look at your own offense, if you see those guys kind of lagging around, you got to make sure that your guys is fresh too because you get an opportunity to, you know, remind guys of responsibility and let guys know the situation. If we get tackled right here, this is the next play, you know. So you get an opportunity to kind of reset as well. Absolutely. Now, the Colts were still in playoff contention. Uh, walking into this game, uh, they could have still been, you know, 10, six and one if they won out and ended up, you know, with a possible seventh seed, especially with a, uh, you know, that tiebreaker uh, tie that they have on their record. Now, if they went out, they're only nine, seven and one. And last year, there were 10 win teams that didn't even make the playoffs. Right. Mm-hmm. Is the season over? You know me, I've been saying all year it's a lot of football left, and I still think it's a lot of football left. Uh, You know, just being a former player, you never think that the season's over while you're in season. So it's just hard to me, hard for me to wrap my head around like, hey, we don't got nothing to play for. You know, the season's over. Let's get, you know, in better draft position or whatever the case may be. Uh, But I'm still a big believer in, man, it, it's a talented roster. Uh, a lot of young guys and some key spots, you know, quarterback situation is is not up to the level we expected. Uh, but we knew this was a possibility as well. We knew Matt Ryan could possibility, 
you know, possible not uh, not have a good year this year as well, just off of what we saw in Atlanta. Uh, you know, but it is a lot of a lot of football left. You know, a lot of good players on the roster. Still, defense is playing a heck of a job. I mean, you got to think the defense haven't given up uh, thirty points or more this entire season. I think all the scores has been in the twenties and and lower. And that's mm-hmm. a that I mean, and that's hard to do in the NFL. Even your top defense is going to have games to where. Uh, offense figure it out and they run up the score so you know we're playing good football in some key spots it's just you know we 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 haven't done enough to just get over that hump it just seemed like we're still on the hump yeah uh that 24 points by the Steelers was only the third time this season that the Indianapolis Colts defense has given up more than 20 points this season so that's impressive I think the most points that they've given up is 26 all year round so that's a that's a very good defense out there however I'll tell you really the the position group or you know the 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 group of players out there that really did something yesterday was that special teams. Oh my mm. goodness. Talk about Isaiah Rogers was doing great. And then in comes mm-hmm. Dallas Flowers and hello almost <laughs> took that bad boy to the house. What'd you think about the special teams play yesterday? Man, I thought they looked confident out there. I mean, getting those kick returns, you know, six, seven, eight yards deep in the end zone and just hitting it, man. You just like to see guys going out there and doing their job in a confident manner. And it just seems like the the special teams uh, match Pittsburgh's energy because those guys were flying around out there on special teams as well. So it seemed like those guys was just ready for that challenge. And uh, and, and that's what you like to see when, when you're talking about your special teams unit all around. Absolutely. Now, did you ever play special teams at all? Hey, hey, I'm not trying to be a diva, but I got a couple snaps out there on special teams, but I never was a core guy. You know, I was a starter, so I never was like a, a serious core guy. Well, see, I, I, well, I mean, Rodney, he plays a lot of special teams. I know. And, you know, so he's he's like the Iron Man out there, right? Yeah. Rodney's <laughs> Even, having a good year, man. He's oh, having a yes, good year. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. It's a shame he can't be here because I'd like to really put a feather in his cap because he made some good plays yesterday. Um, there was a few punts that I had noticed both against the Colts and against the Steelers, one each where I thought a special teams guy kind of ran into the plant leg of both punters. And there were also, you know, no flag called. I I also saw some, some plays where holding was not called. I saw some plays where I thought past, you know, interference should have been called, uh, what, what do you think of the refereeing yesterday? Do you think they they did a good job, or do you think they were just in that that aspect of hey, let the guys play? See, as a as a player, you get a a scouting report on the officials every week. Well, I know I did as a player. Every week, I used to get a scouting report on how the how the officials gonna officiate the games, and they give rankings too of every group of officials. So you know, one group you might have you know, this week might be number one in in DPIs. So, you know, you're going to have to play the game kind of, you know, safe. And then you might have a group of officials that's ranked at the bottom of the league in offensive holding or whatever the the stats may may be for that group. And it seems like this was a group that was going to let these guys play a little bit. So as long as it's consistent, guys can adjust their play and play well. The, The only time that I used to have problem or still have problems when it comes to officiating is when guys are just not in, not consistent in their calls because it's hard for players to adjust how to play the game when you don't know how the officials are going to call things so if they're going to let things go man and, it, and it's going on both sides I mean you can't complain about it okay okay um well, let's talk about Matt Ryan uh all year I have been giving Matt Ryan the benefit of the doubt right because I'm looking at the film and I'm seeing, you know, he just doesn't have time in the pocket to get the ball downfield, things of that nature. There were a couple plays where I was like, where is the throwing power? That that ball needs to get there a lot faster, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that deep pass uh, to Michael Pittman that ended up being a 50-50 catch, that ball seemed like it took forever to get there. And it was only like 25 yards in the air, you know, 30 yards in the air, uh, is that a problem moving forward? When you got TJ Watt on on one side and you're you haven't been sure all year about your pocket and things like that, sometimes your feet 
or is not set like it needs to be to throw certain balls so it might not have the velocity or the the strength or the confidence in himself to make certain throws that's because he he all year he's been worried about so many other things and I think a couple of throws last night was just him not having his feet you know set seeing reads a little late just because of the pocket presence and uh pressure that that some of those Pittsburgh Steelers guys was getting there on some of the passes Okay. What do you think of the O-line play last night? I thought the O-line did, you know, fairly a decent job. I mean, whenever T.J. Watt can't uh, affect the game in the manner that he normally affects the game, I mean, you, you got to give credit to those guys. I mean, did the Steelers make some, you know, great stunts and pressures to cause, uh, you know, pressure on Matt Ryan? Yeah, and that's going to happen in, in games. But I thought overall – you know, really based on on what those guys been doing all year, last night was one of their better games as a whole. I mean, you know, you, you run the ball for almost five yards a carry. I think we were at 4.4, 4.5 or something like that. You give up a couple sacks, but it was more coverage sacks than, mm -hmm. you know, just guys running free. So, uh, I mean, you can you can build off that. You can you can live with those that that type of play from your O-line, especially when they've been struggling all year. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think the O line looked much better. I was scared to death walking into this game, you know. For the, <laughs> the I mean, you, you look at Hayward and Highsmith and Watt, those three guys right there are scary, you know. I mean, Pittsburgh's known for their blitzing, they're known mm -hmm. for disguises, they're known for all sorts. And I thought the offensive line performed admirably, uh, against this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. And I'm hoping that that's a positive that we could take out of this game, even though we lost that, you know, moving forward towards the next game, which we'll get into uh, on the third show against the Cowboys, you know, in about uh, 25 minutes or so. Hopefully that that'll help because like you said, you know, players, coaches, they're not out here taking, they're trying to win every game, right? Yep. That they're, yep. they're not worried about the draft. They're, they're not Oh, we really need to get a new guy here when you you might not even be there. You know what I mean? Right. Because, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that's only fans. Um, and maybe the owner. Eh, it depends upon the owner, but I'm sure Ursay always wants to win, don't he? I mean, you you, yeah. you, you knew Ursay a little bit. Does, does he ever think of tanking, or does he think we got to win because you know it's just pride? I mean, it's a pride thing. I mean, those guys brag about their franchises just like players brag about their team and their accolades as well. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you know winning is going to bring revenue to your business. I mean, if you the more you lose, the more you're going to lose money just from a totality standpoint where it's jersey sales, where it's marketing, whatever the case may be. You know, it's hard to uh, market a team that don't win. And the reason why the Coach franchise has been so great over the years because they've always been looked at as a franchise you know that that's trying to get Super Bowls that's that's getting AFC championships that's winning their divisions every year and just because you know it's been a couple of down years don't negate what the franchise has done in the history of it and how people view it uh people know that the coach are going to get back to their winning ways it's just right now it's just been a fluctuate of different players at key spots and we haven't hit home yet with our long-term guys that we need at such like quarterback positions young receivers um you know just just at certain spots to where you need to have longevity right now we got you know just a you know circus of guys you know coming in and out of the lineup year to year until we find that chemistry of core pieces that's going to be there for the long haul you know we got to continue to you know, search and try to become a better team year in year out day by day Absolutely. Um, I, I feel the same way. Uh, but this year, there's been two problems. One, we've talked about the offensive line, but as we've seen since Jeff Saturday's gotten here, it seems like the offensive line is seemingly progressively getting mm -hmm. better and better. Two weeks two in weeks. a row. Yes. Yep. Now the question is, what's up with these turnovers? <laughs> I mean, we are at the tail end of the turnover ratio every single game Jonathan Taylor fumbles the handoff Matt Ryan throws interceptions the defense can't seem to get their hands on the ball for nothing what's going on here uh, when you don't have no identity on offense and you're struggling week to week and you have deficiencies at certain spots as a coordinator from the opposing defense. 
uh, I mean, your light bulbs start going off on what you can do, how you're going to attack certain things, what you're going to take away uh, from. Uh, it's just a lot that you show on film when you're struggling that when the opposing team study you and break you down, they're going to make it hard on you. And right now, you know, you know, we're pressing for plays to be made on our offense. And whenever you're pressing to do certain things, it's a high risk that turnovers are going to happen. And, uh, and, you know, in the situation that we're in as a team and everything, you know, you got to feel the pressure that those offensive guys are facing every time they walk on the field because they want good things to happen. But again, you know, when, when you're pressuring to do things, man, you know, the bad things are going to come with that. Absolutely. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode discussing uh, last night's Monday night football game. Oh, this was Believe in Colts brought to you by Bet Online. And as usual, go Colts. Do you believe? 